Okay, welcome back to part two. Um, in part one, we done this lovely sky and some hills in the distance, some nice trees, and uh, we just done this little church here. Now, I went over the roof, I just added a little bit of light to the roof, um, and I just brightened some parts of it here and there, but not much. But you can push your own imagination into this. You could add a little cottage, or you could do your own little church or something. Um, you know, you could just make it your own. So, let's continue on with this. Now, I'm going to finish this ground here. So, I'm going to take a brush. Let me see. It's okay. I'll take this kind of a worn flat brush, alright? And look, I still have the same palette. And I still have a little bit of turpentine. I'm going to dampen my brush slightly. And I'm going to take some white. Little touch of pink. And a little touch of phthalo blue. And let's see what that gives us. Now it's quite thin. Um, and by thin I mean lots of turps. So I want to thicken it slightly. So I take a bit of white, a bit of blue and a bit of pink again. Tiny little bits. And let me just see now. Okay, that's not bad. I'll go with that for now. But I will lighten it um, in a moment. So I'm just going to go over here into that and come up under those trees by the way I added some extra little bit of foliage just with my um, with my fan brush just a little here and there and you could even soften maybe just soften that line in here and there just slightly okay that's not bad and what I might do is darken right down in here so where it kind of turns down towards the water i'm going to make that much darker so i'll take some phthalo blue some crimson plenty of these now okay and a little touch of black that'll give me a much darker rich kind of a blue than i want it let me just take a look at that now i'm trying to think is that too cold or that too warm well it's too cold i want to make it a little bit warmer so a little bit of red and a touch of burnt umber and that will warm it just a bit well, let me just take a look at this now, I'm coming down at a kind of an angle like this because I want to show that the ground kind of turns down like this okay so I'm flicking up and around see I'm kind of flicking up this way and around very quickly see And I'm going to soften it back up in then, just here and there, look. It's just basically, I just want to show the direction of the, the, the ground kind of turning down like this, you see. That's all I want to do really. And then I'm going to give, give that a wipe. And I'm then going to take some nice dark colour, some burnt umber and some crimson perhaps. And go right down here and flick that up here and there, look. Because along the water's edge will always have a kind of a dark line, a slightly darker line, won't it? So let's take some brown, even a little, even a little bit of black, and some crimson. Now, what is that noise? There's an awful noise coming from my easel and it's very, very annoying. Every time I go at the painting, it makes a little noise. Very annoying. It's just me. Now, let's go a little bit of dark on the end of that. So, now, that is, it looks a bit better, doesn't it? Now, let me just see if the camera is focused in all right on this. Yes, that's fine. Now, so there we go. That's that dark done. The next thing I want to do is, I'm going to take my small stubby brush, and it's dry. I'm going to take some white. Now, let me get a clean piece of my palette. And I'm going to take a little touch of the pink. Just the tiniest little touch of that pink. And some of the Naples yellow. Okay. Now, a bit more of the pink rather than the yellow. But it's a nice warm kind of a sunlit colour. And just up there, I'm going to kind of flick it along 
there and there, look just a little, just to add a little bit of light to the ground, okay, that's all. So some white, some Naples yellow and a little pink. There, that's nice on that, wasn't it? And it's just kind of adding to the kind of snowy effect, that's all. Okay, there we go. Now, so there, it's starting to look like snow now, isn't it? And I know that there's a little footpath in there. There is a footpath on it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of dark colour, a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And let's just fix this table here. Right. Now, I have a little roadway, I know it's a little footpath coming from the doorway and it comes along like that. It goes off up, okay? It's there, I know it's there. So let me just put that little dark line in here and there. Well, of course, you know, it's going to be, there's so much snow around there that you're hardly going to even see it, are you really? So I'm just taking a little bit of white there, look, and just bring the white just along. There and there. No, just like that, okay? Right. Now that'll do. I might just add a little ridge of white just along the tip of the footpath, just there, just a little. And what I might then do is, I'm just thinking now, oh, how can we make this nice? Um, I'm going to take a fan brush, right? And now this is not a great fan brush. I left this dry by accident, so it's a bit hard on top. So I'm just going to get another one, another nice soft one. And I'm going to take some burnt umber. A little burnt umber there. And I think maybe just burnt umber, okay? I'm going to add some little flicks of reeds here and there, okay? Just like that. Perhaps even take a touch of black. And you see then what I'm going to do is I am going to give this a quick clean, dip it in and give it a good rub on our tissue just to clean most of that colour off the tip of the brush. So you can see now it's pretty clean again. Then I'm going to take some white and a little of the warm colour down here. Let's make another look, let's take a little bit of the yellowy colour here. I'm going to just give it a couple of flicks here and there. And that just, you know, a little bit of snowy kind of a grassy area there. And then with small brush, let's just take little dots of that whitey colour. And let's add a few little dots of that here and there, look. So this could be just like the little buds and stuff that are growing up, the little weeds. And little spots of snow just resting here and there on some of them. Okay. It's really just to add a bit of interest into the painting, that's all. And I might just lighten some of that here. Just here and there. Um, okay, let's take a look. Let's start our water. I think we're ready to tackle the water. Come on, let's go. Right, I'll take my same brush that I've been using now all of the time. My same flat brush. Give it a quick clean. Get it just relatively clean. It doesn't have to be spotless, remember. And I'm going to start by reflecting this colour on the water, okay? But it might be a little bit darker. So, dampen my brush. I'll take some of that Naples yellow. Come down here and take some of that pink and a bit of white. Now, a bit more yellow there. I want to aim for a similar colour but a slightly darker colour. Does that make sense? 
Now let me just take a look. Now that to me is a little bit on the mucky kind of side. It's a little it's a little mucky for me. I might try some cadmium yellow and some pink. And again a little white. Now if that's a bit pinky, let's take a bit more yellow. Because you see, what happens with oil painting is as you're picking up little bits of colour, um, you can kind of pick up other bits of colour as well. So like for instance, on the red there might be a little bit of blue or black, so the brush might pick up that little bit. You just need to be careful, that's all. Let's go right across there now with that colour, look. Go right up into the tree line. And come right across. And then just pull it down. Now don't worry if you go through your trees and stuff like that, we can fix all of that. And what I'm going to do is, in fact I will take some, let me see now, I'll take some of the purpley colour from the trees just to reflect that down, okay? So I might take some cobalt blue, a little crimson, and I'm going to keep this maybe on the slightly redder side again, because I don't want any green in this. I'm just going to go along there and pull some of that down, okay? Just to reflect some of those trees up there in the distance. Then I'll take my soft brush and then pull it down gently. And then across, okay? Now we'll soften this with our finger. I want to just scrub it across with your finger, soften it in. Feel that kind of a misty area off in the distance. Okay, does that make sense? Well, as it comes down, it's going to start getting bluer and bluer. And we'll end up there with a very dark, rich blue down here. So, let's start adding colour to this. I'll go to the middle here, okay? And let's take some crimson. And let's take a little... Now, I'm trying to decide cobalt or phthalo. I might try cobalt. Let's try a little cobalt because it's a bit more sort of forgiving. It doesn't overpower the painting. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Let's try Thalo because that's a bit kind of plummy for me, a little bit plummy. So, you know, you just have to be careful with your mixing. Just take your time. And if something f feels like it's a bit too strong for your painting, then just try something else. See what I mean? Just be careful, take your time. And let's go over here. Just pull it side to side in under those little bushes there. And when I'm painting water, I'm always going left and right, okay? Never up and down or at an angle like this. Always left and right. That just makes it more natural. It makes it gives it a more natural feel, alright? Now let's continue on. I'm dampening my brush down again slightly because it's a little dry. So some sailor blue this time, some crimson, and let's go with a touch of white. The white would make it that bit softer, I think. Now let's try this. Ooh, that's a nice dark colour now, isn't it? Okay, let's take a bit of white in that. And a touch more of the crimson. So you can see now how thin my mixes are. You see, like I'm dragging it across the canvas. It's not very thick paint, there's not a lot of thick paint on my brush. I know a lot of artists would use lots of thick paint and they really cover lots of the canvas. I kind of prefer to keep my layers a little thin and if I feel I need to add more to them, I can later on. You know, that's just the way I kind of like to paint. Um, I find it, you have a lot more control and you have a lot more, you have a better chance of fixing something if it goes wrong. It's not as hard to fix problems. It's just a thin layer there because it's quite easy to paint over it. Whereas if you have lots of thick paint all over that, it's going to be very difficult to fix anything on that unless you rub it all off of the cloth but this is just the way I like to do it that's all everybody's different 
Isn't that right? What's going on there now? I keep sitting back down, I want to keep looking at this to make sure I'm not overpowering the painting. Okay? That's all. And I might I might lighten that actually just a little. I'll take some phthalo, a touch of crimson, and a bit of white. Just to reflect that nice light colour that we have that we have up here, you see? And let's even take a little bit of white and let's put a little bit of white across here and there. So that kind of gives it a nice glow now, doesn't it? A nice wintry sort of a glow. And at this stage, I might switch to my small study. And I might just start bringing in little bits of colour. So, for instance, a little bit of that very light blue I might kind of bring in here and there just along with the pink okay <coughs> excuse me uh, it's just to give it a bit of movement that's all if anything else and look left and right just a little bit of movement through there left and right See? It does help, doesn't it? Now I'm, really, I'm going to be putting reflections down, so I will be pulling down over a lot of this. So not to worry. There we go. Now I'll sit back again. Take a little look at that. Isn't that quite nice now, isn't it? Let's get some reflections going. So we have the basic kind of water down okay that basic layer is down I'm not going to start putting some reflections from the snow on the trees and reflect some of this down and I'll show you how to just do it very subtle and very carefully and very easily so what we'll do is we have a very kind of a light pink here don't we so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just mix a little light pink all right I come down here because I have a little light color here it's a similar color to that but albeit a little darker. So let's take some crimson. I might even take a little bit of burnt umber. And I might take a touch of blue. Now I think that's pretty close. So I'm looking at this colour and I'm looking at that colour. And it's not far off. Let me just take a look now. Do a little tester like that, you see? Now that looks quite good to me. So I'm just going to pull that down. Straight down like that. And follow this line here. This line is almost horizontal, isn't it? So we can go pretty much horizontal, I reckon. Just where it stops, okay? Now this is just a reflection, it's an impression. Try not to be perfect with this. And then we have a dark roof, don't we? Now if you want, if it makes it easier for you, you can just take a little white, okay, and very carefully just imagine this line coming from this part. So we bring this line straight down, imagine it, and it stops here, okay. So this now is that corner there, okay. That corner is this corner. So this line goes that way here. So down here on the reflection it's going to go this way, isn't it. So let's just go very loosely like that okay job done now let's find this point so bring that point straight down da -da 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 -da, I'd say about here so that will be the top so now I know where to go with my roof now watch now I'm just going to take a little black and a little blue just a relatively dark colour a blacky blue colour similar to what we have on this and let's just come across first on this line. Okay. I might take a touch more blue. That. And let's follow this line down. And then let's create this line here. Okay. 
and then pull everything else down inside of that look straight down all the way now don't worry about the top line because what I'm going to do next is well I'll show you now in just a moment I want to darken this side to match this side here because it's quite dark isn't it let's take a little black and a little blue again and let's just darken that side just a little okay that'll do what I'm going to do next is put a slight reflection of the windows nice and simple let's just take a nice dark brownie red colour let's take some burnt umber and some crimson and let's take a touch of black as well and that will give us a nice dark brown ready colour and let's imagine all these coming straight down here they want to come straight down here like this and next one next to it and another one here and we have this one here as well take a bit more pink for that, that's just a bit more pink inside that one isn't there so let's just imagine that coming straight down here like so okay now that's the first part done next we can do this section here let's reflect that so we're going to go with a slightly darker colour now take a bit of white mix it into that other colour that we just mixed so a dark kind of a grey blue let's take some of the yellow blue some black and a little red and I might take a touch of white as well actually let me just check that now okay yeah it's not bad it's not bad let me just warm it a little bit more and let's just put that in very loosely okay like so then I'm going to put in a suggestion of that door which is let's just go with a dark brown yes perhaps a touch of cyanide and let's just imagine that comes down like that down like that okay let's darken it a bit darken it right down I've been very loose now with all of this and there's a good reason for that now I want to just fix the line of this here it's a little bit crooked I think so I'll bring it just up a bit higher there just on one side just a little and then I'm going to suggest the white around the doorway now it's going to be like a dull dullish kind of a blue all right so let's just imagine there's a little bit of a nice little surround coming around that again don't be particular now we have white phasia and soffit don't we let's take a bit of white and a little blue and put that in you see all I'm doing is painting the very same thing in reverse upside down that's all I'm doing see what I mean I know it's not perfect but it's just for a tutorial that's all now let's go across here like that and the next part I'm going to do is it's, it's actually very simple just to make this kind of merge in with the water I am basically just going to pull everything down with a very soft brush all right and I have a very soft brush here my soft blender brush I'm going to pull very gently downwards look and everything now is kind of going together see and if you can, because my easel is in the way here I'm just going to go from the bottom up just for the roof alright 
and just keep going over the doorway. Look, pull it all. Don't worry, you're not going to mess it up. Pull it all down. Keep going. Keep going. And suddenly we, we start seeing reflections, don't we? And I know it's not perfect, but it's 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 a start. The next job I'm going to do is I am going to with my brush oh, here. Um, with this brush. I'm going to just add some reflections of these little white snow, snowy kind of bushes. So I'm just going to get some white there now on my palette. And it's the reflections I think that I'm going to make this painting. Let's take some white, tiny bit of blue. It's not going to be pure white. In fact, if anything, I'd say a touch of pink, a touch of crimson. Alright. And I'm going to very gently pull downwards, look creating the shape of the bush. Little kind of circles, see? A little bit there, a little bit there. And I could do the same with this along here. So these little weeds and so on. Now I know we have some darker ones. In fact, look what we'll do is, let's take our fan brush and get some nice dark ones on first, yes? Some burnt umber and a little black and let's pull those down. Let's just reflect some of those down into the water like that, okay? First. And then, let's grab some of the snow ones and pull some of those down. Don't overdo it now, just here and there where you can see. And again, with our soft brush, let's pull these, pull them down. I'm just being very gentle not to over, overdo it, okay? Now, what do we think of this so far? How's that looking now so far? Coming on, not bad, is it? The next thing I want to do is I'm going to take my palette knife and let me just see now, let me just make sure I'm happy enough with everything before I move on. Okay, I'll take my palette knife and I'm going to take some white, a tiny bit of blue and I'm going to make some light blue reflect, as uh, light blue little ripples just here and there on the water, okay? So let's say along this river bank. Let's just keep everything horizontal, okay? Little wiggle here and there, see? And put them through the reflections because that's what makes the reflection look like a reflection. With these little ripples going through it, you see? So now you can see it's coming along nicely, isn't it? And let's go through the roof for one or two. And let's put a couple here. Isn't that coming on nicely now? Nice and simple. And let's go out here, out of the painting as well. Again, I'm not going to overdo it. And I'm going to pull across those then with my soft blush brush, just kind of softening them back in very slightly, only just very slightly. Okay, let's have a look. And that's not bad now, is it? Now my next step is I want to create a nice kind of a snowy, ver a nice kind of a snowy uh, patch here, patch of ground. Okay, so I'm going to dampen my medium stubby brush, and let me just clean it as best I can. Okay, I need more turpentine, so I'll put a little bit of turpentine in there to my little jar, and I'm going to 
pick up some white, put it in there, take some, some phthalo blue and a touch of the pink. And let's put a nice patch of snowy ground coming across here, okay? There we are. And you can even cut in front of the roof on the reflection as well a little bit if you want. If you like the reflection, now you can leave it as it is, if you like it as it is, just leave it. But I think this will just break up the water a little and kind of push it back a bit as well. Because we are very close to a little bank, there's a little bank of grass just here. Now I have the kind of the base colour in here, right? I have that kind of pretty much done. So the next thing I'm going to do is I might try um, I might try my palette knife. Let me see now my palette knife or perhaps a small stubby. Let's try the small stubby. And let's get some nice bright snow in here. So let's make sure it's clean. And I'll take some cobalt blue and a lot of white. Okay? And a touch of the pink. And let's just flick this back here and there, look. It's just to create a bit of texture, that's all. take our small pointy brush and we can put in some little patches of grass so little brown blacky kind of weeds and twigs kind of creeping through here and there see just little small little things popping up here and there because this is a very kind of a heavily wooded area if you're ever in Cork, please do go down and visit um, Gurgan Barra. It's an absolute, it's a beautiful place to be. And um, honestly, you will not be disappointed. It's absolutely stunning. And it's real rural kind of Ireland. So if you want to experience real rural Irish culture, Gurgan Barra is the place to go. It's absolutely wonderful. Now, okay look, just some little bits and bobs, it could be anything, just bits of rough ground, that all, that's all of stuff, that's all. Now, okay, and I think I'm going to put a big tree across here now with some foliage, and that'll kind of, it'll almost hug the painting, alright? So let me get, I suppose I'll just get a little flat brush, okay? And dampen that, plenty of turpentine, very watery, let's get some burnt umber. And a little black, lots of turpentine, and let me just start now by doing the thick ones first, okay? Right around like that. That's one, and I come off of that one with another one. I'll do the thinner ones with the smaller brush then, okay? And we could have another one going off up there, let's say. And we have one turning down into the painting, like that. And let's put another one here. And now I'm going to switch to my small pointy brush. Or my detail brush, as I like to call it. And let's just put in a little loose suggestion of some little branches. And it's just little flicks, that's all. Oh, 
I think just remember um, sometimes simple is best. Keep it simple. Okay. Nice and easy. Don't go crazy. Just a nice little impression. And I will frame this now and I will bring it out and I will hang it up in Cafe Petoni's in Wilton Shopping Centre and um, let's see if uh, people like it and if there's a lot of interest in it it is of course for sale if you're interested just let me know I'll give you a nice discount I always like to give my viewers a discount isn't that right? okay let's keep going with this now just adding some nice little branches here and there And the last one up here. Alright, now, so we have most of our branches in. You can keep going if you like. So let's now just take a look at that for a moment. Now let's add some nice snow to this. And I think just lots of white, perhaps with a touch of blue in it but mostly white, okay? And that will really kind of stand out. Let's go up here now. Lots of thick white with a hint of blue on your brush. And let's just go along here and there. Add little, little dabs resting on the branches, you see? Just little, tiny bits of white paint settling on the branches and, and I look I'm only holding the brush between two fingers that's how lately I'm doing it I'm just kind of letting it dance here and there you see dance around and keep sitting back and I won't I don't want to kind of overdo this I want to um, I want to keep it nice and sort of subtle. Let's put a couple just around here and there. And perhaps one or two little, a couple of flicks of snow, perhaps, look. A little, just to kind of suggest that perhaps it's coming loose and it's sort of falling off here and there. Make it a nice little snow scene, yes? There. How's that? I think that's pretty good now. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Let me move the camera so you can see exactly. Ah, you can, you can see it. Uh, right, I want to put two people walking on the footpath because this church is known for people, a lot of people getting married in the church. And um, I think a lot of people will relate to the painting when they see um, a couple walking up the footpath. So I think I might put something like that in there as well. So let me see now, a nice warm colour. Um, right, what could be put there? I'm thinking crimson and cyan. Crimson and cyan for one person. That'll be a nice warm colour, won't it? So let's pick a spot now. So let's say here, okay? So this is the top, now remember it's just a carrot. This is the top half of one person. That's the top half of a carrot, isn't it? Clean the brush. And let's take a bit of black. And let's say this is the bottom half of the carrot. Okay. There we 
we go. Simple, yes? Let me zoom in and show you what I mean. Just so you can see. Right. Now, so we have the top half and the bottom half of a carrot there, yes? Then we'll take maybe some Naples yellow and some of this cyan. Eh? I might lighten it slightly because I want to show I, I really want to show the, the person. So we get some Naples yellow and cyanide over this. Okay. And let's add a touch of light to one side of that. No. Then let's give it a little head. It's not a person without a head, is it? So a little dot on the top. Like so. Then let's put one next to it. Let's take some Naples yellow with some white, perhaps, for this one. Nice bright colour. And let's go down like this. And let's imagine one is hugging the other, see? So a little bit of that colour just around like that. Isn't that lovely? And let's put a nice dark brown on this for the legs here. And then again um, some brown for the head. Take a bit of brown for the head here. And let's put some hair, a long hair on this one. And that tells you then that it's, it's a woman. Isn't it? Okay. Now let's give the guy a hat. Let's put a nice little flick for a cap. Like that. And then we have a shadow as well. Let's take some blue and some pink. Make a nice little shadow there. Now take a bit of black as well, look. And put a nice little shadow coming off of that. Like so. And there we have a nice couple walking along. I might just, with my little pointy brush, add little lights here and there on the snow with that Naples yellow and white. Okay, just to add a bit of texture, that's all. See? And I think we are probably done. Let me zoom back now, slowly, and show you what we have created. Nice light point there on the sky, see that? Isn't that lovely? Nice evening sky and simple reflections. Now I might continue working on the church just a little bit, tidying it up here and there, but you get the idea. And I come down here now, and what I might do here actually is look, I'll show you. I'm going to just add some little ripples here and there to the water, just with my pointy brush, okay? Just to um, just short off just a little bit more. No. Giving it just a little wiggle. And it's almost like painting a little snake on the water, you see, look. Here. Again, I won't overdo it too much, but you can kind of see what I mean. And let me see now, is there anything else there that we want to add to this? I'll come down here 
and I might add a little light just here and there on that. Okay, then most importantly we have to sign S. Conway like that and we can't forget our little bird up in the sky he is integral to the painting isn't he and let's pull him up here little bird ok there we go job done finished um, I'll probably fix some like I'll try and fix some of the doorway here. I kind of make it a bit more symmetrical. You know, just tidy it up a little bit. But otherwise that's kind of pretty much the feeling I was trying to capture. Isn't that lovely? Last but not least we have a frame, don't we? So we must put a frame on this. Let me zoom right back here now. So we can get a frame on this. And I'll try and straighten the camera now as best I can. There we go. Right, here's the frame I made earlier. And I look forward to this. Right, three, two, one, go. And voila. How about that? Isn't that just stunning? Warm colours, cool colours. And that's it. I'll pop out the Café Petronis, hang down on the wall, and see if we can get some interested parties, yes? Won't that be fun? Right, I'm going to turn the camera here on to myself, and this little thingamajig I have set up here, it squeaks and it's terrible, it gets stuck and all sorts of things. Um, it's only a homemade little jig I have for my camcorder, that's all. Nothing expensive. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun painting that. Um, I'm going to pop it on my Facebook page, put it up there, see if I can get some interest. Um, I will be doing another tutorial on Patreon as well in the next uh, couple of days. I'm doing one for Suki, who is a very, very big supporter of mine. She wanted me to paint a particular kind of um, a scene. It's a really lovely kind of a uh, mystical kind of a scene with a little bendy kind of a cottage in the landscape so I'm doing that for my patrons um, if you want to support me in any way at all pop over to Patreon and there are lots more tutorials on there as well um, just for your help just for your support for helping me along there's plenty more over there go and take a look and um, let's get the channel back up and running yes I'm, uh, I'm going along slowly I'm getting there bit by bit but you know it's it's looking up it's looking good so thank you so much for your support and it's because of you I'm here just because of you so I'll go on get your stuff and have a bit of fun with that and see how you get on or just interpret your in, interpret this in your own way and use your own techniques and put something else in the painting but you know I hope you've learned something and I hope I've given you something to think about at least so I will see you next week and it's been an absolute joy painting for you this week. I will see you very soon. God bless and happy painting.